Taylor was my angel from the day she was born. She was incredible, she was inspiring. She celebrated every moment of life. And her life suddenly stopped on May 29th, 2003. The day was the day we'll never forget. There's nothing like realizing and seeing the look in your mom's face when she's telling you something like that. It doesn't matter how old you are. I couldn't understand that our family's world had just like flipped upside down. Within weeks of her diagnosis, she was, we were all shocked at the fact that pediatric cancer was so desperately underfunded. And she wanted to start a foundation within three weeks to help other children so that someday they would not have to face the same consequences that she did. And we have made her wishes eternal. The people who didn't feel well after me, would, I would be giving back to them, helping research, knowing that they may be getting treatments that I funded the research for. It's really great. With a very, very serious illness, she triumphed and celebrated every moment of her entire life. She wanted to find a cure for pediatric cancer. She wanted to save a child's life. She wanted other kids to not have to go through what she was going through and not have to deal with the pain of chemotherapy and be able to say, I'm in remission for five years. She was determined to get squeeze every, every um, minute of life out of the time she had, and she was uh, convinced there was always a positive um, outcome, and, and she was convinced she could spread that. And honestly, Tabans was really her baby from the beginning, and it continues to be, and it's, and it's about that, that hope and that optimism that there's, a, there's an opportunity that saves somebody right around the corner. We lost her seven and a half years ago, and I have spent the last seven and a half years making our wishes become eternal, and that's why we're changing the name from Tay Bands to Conquering Kids Cancer because we feel that that name will be, have much more national recognition. When, when uh, Taylor walked into the clinic, she was a ray of sunshine. And, um, you know, I actually, she made me believe um, that these new therapies would cure her. Uh, and that was um, an extraordinary uh, motivation for me. Uh, but we're, we're really trying to make Taylor's dream a reality because she was all about no kid ever having to go through uh, what she went through. Um, and, uh, and I think about her all the time. The night before she died, um, she took me aside and she did what she did every single night for four or five years and said, um, uh, Daddy, what are we gonna do next? When I go home, what's my next step? It never dawned on her that there wasn't a next step because there was always a next step. And it never dawned on her that I wouldn't find it. And uh, for the rest of my life, I'll know I let her down because there wasn't a next step. Today, today there are next steps. Our vision is to use precision medicine, to use genomic sequencing as a way of trying to find new options and uh, ideally more effective options for the 20% of patients that currently are not cured. I think in the future, we think that precision medicine can also impact the 80% of patients who are currently cured in a way that would decrease toxicity and long-term side effects. We have a number of children who have benefited from the program. The one that sticks out in my mind the most uh, is a, 
a young girl who had a leukemia that was very, very resistant to therapy. And so we put uh, her leukemia through the PIP-seq program, and so we added a new medicine to her uh, regimen, and she went into a really nice and uh, deep remission. And this is, to me, amazing, considering that she had failed uh, two or three prior attempts to get her into remission. Currently, the cost of sequencing the tumor of uh, for a patient is still in the range of about $10,000. It is not a test, it is not technology that is covered by insurance companies. Uh, we actually need philanthropic support to be able to make these technologies available to all of the patients that we treat uh, in, in our clinic. There are doctors who are doing amazing work in pediatric cancer. And for us not to give them the tools and resources that they need to continue doing that, it, it's, in, it's, it's unconscionable. It's not just about saying, oh, doctors haven't cured cancer yet. You're right, doctors haven't cured cancer yet, but we can't expect them to do it without the tools and resources. They're putting in the work. They're holding up their end of the bargain, and it's up to us to hold up ours. After five years of treatment, it didn't work, and we need medicines that are developed for children, you know, from the 21st century. But we owe it to every kid in every pediatric oncology ward everywhere in the world that's using 30-year-old medicines when that science exists. And so Taylor's optimism and dedication to uh, one more step at a time is part of why we do what we do, and it's part of what Columbia does, and it's part of um, what drives us, because there's out there is, is that one other kid, and maybe every kid, who, uh, who doesn't have to go through this. I love you too.